There's no um, non notification for temporary military training activities. Uh, I don't think. There's no notification. Well, there, there is. There's no um, clause removing the need for notification um, for temporary military training activities. So, do people currently get notified if that's going to happen? Um, the current plan doesn't have rules around temporary military training activities. Um, so, we're introducing them at the request of um, NZDF um, because they're across the nation introducing these into district plans. But I, I don't but the reasons sure. for notification or, or the lack of is, is what has been raised by the Mayor previously. Right. Okay. Recommendation 13. Uh, 13. Um, That's transport. straightforward. David. Recommendation 14. Straightforward. Straightforward, yeah. Um. Utilities and energy. 15. For utilities and energy. This was one yep. I raised. <laughs> recommendation 15. Yes, recommendation yep. 15. Um, that seems stri that was straightforward. No so right. We're not recommending any change around utilities. Okay. Yeah, well, well, we're going through them one by one. Yeah, yeah, but so there's no rec no amendment um, recommended. That's right. We, we thought all the all the ones on page ten and eleven, so that's through to eighteen, were straightforward. Okay, cool. Yep, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Page twelve, nineteen. Straightforward. Twenty. 21, 22, 20. So what's, just, let's just get straight. Can you just explain a bit more what you're doing in terms of 22? Bill, so um, I guess once we'd all finished that, deleting and, and, and had roles. a look, there was you know, a bit of overlap with what was in the rural quarry chapter. Um, so we've just removed that overlap. So we're not in any way reducing the assessment that we'd have to do if people wanted to put in... The rural quarry chapter has stayed the same, as I understand it, and it's just some deletions from my chapter, from you know, the utilities chapter. Cool. No, sorry, what am I... 22, this one. Yeah, utilities oh, and energy. On, about the wrong chapter. These rules duplicate those in chapter 12 slash 6. So they're just a duplication. Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, recommendation 23... Recommendation 24, 25, 26, 27, 27. Make it easier or re removing assessment matters? Oh, as the recommendation says, there are some changes I discussed further down. Um, oh, yeah, rather, than, rather than sort of address, write the same thing twice, they're addressed in a later point. But yes, there are some changes to include essentially um, an advice note setting out when the NES would apply. So you can point out that one. But you're not doing cross referencing internally within the plan, is that no. what you're saying? Yeah. 28. 28. Um, you might want to discuss. Sorry, Ellie. Yeah, no, I, just, I think mentioned earthworks. Whereabouts? Uh, on 28. Right. Uh, the, the Minister's comments relates to um, reduced consenting around an earthworks is one of the issues there. Mm -hmm. Does that relate to foundations? Yes, it would. Um, there is, however, an exemption in the earthworks section um, for structures that have a building consent. So if they have a building consent for a tower or a building or something, then they don't need to comply with the earthworks But provisions. there are some that don't require a consent. Mm. Does that mean that this additional, what I would see as an additional protection, if you like, is removed or reduced as a result of the recommendation from the Minister? You are more concerned about residential, yes. Mm. This is about utilities chapter. and energies, ch this chapter. So I need to explain. Yeah. All right. Um, recommendation 29. Very straightforward. Straightforward. 30. 
this one. Do you want to speak to that? This one? No? Any questions about 30? There's no change. 31. 32. There should be some response. So have we done that rigorous assessment of those areas? It's not related to... It, it's um, not related to housing specifically. Uh, this chapter is about utilities and energy, so it's not related to this particular chapter, that comment. Well, except like if you take the fuel tanks in Littleton, I think it's a pretty good example of a utility that's going in a high hazard area. Yeah, um, I guess the other thing is that Chapter 5 deals with hazards rather than this chapter, so that does deal with infrastructure and utilities and hazardous areas and separately to this. Those petrol tanks at Littleton are the subject also of further in, um, information that's going to the hearings panel. That um, Stage 1 Natural Hazards chapter hearing has not closed. That's fine. So maybe what we need to say in here, we are doing a rigorous assessment of areas proposed to be made available. Mm -hmm. For activities um, in terms of utilities and energy, um, and, will and that will not increase the risk from natural hazards, and will provide a full explanation in S32, whatever. We can but, do that. Did we have the know. explanation in the 32 analysis on that? In the natural hazards chapter, right? In this chapter. Or then maybe that just, that, just, just, just make it a, a cross reference. Yes. Yeah. But it's also around the types of activities. So. I would have thought that you would want something in utilities saying having f explosive fuel tanks in a high hazard area, the assessment shows that X, Y, Z, here's the rules if you want to have them in there. Well, those are in that chapter though, not in this chapter. We'll do cross-referencing to the natural hazards chapter. Right. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's almost like recommendation 31 doesn't belong here at all. Mm. Which is why he had not, not applicable there. Right, okay, right. Um, uh, 32. I thought they were all straightforward down yeah. to the bottom of page 17. But 33, 34, 35, 36, 37. One you might want to talk to. 38. Um, you might want some discussion about that. Do you want to just. Okay. Um, so the Minister's comments were that the, the buffer zone wasn't appropriate um, in all the places where I included it, and I agree. Um, so I've amended some of those provisions and deleted some of them. Um, you can see that in your document. So I guess the intent of the buffer was to prevent something large being erected in front of something that we wanted to see, and you didn't want it to be interrupted with a big structure. Yeah, but it, it isn't applicable in all the areas that I had uh, included it. So, so you feel that you've got still sufficient yeah. protection for those um, outstanding features of our wonderful environment? Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, oh, the, it's difficult where it comes to footpaths because of the NES, um, but there are provisions in the NES that say where a site is identified as being of high visual amenity, I think is the word, um, that the, the district plan rules um, do apply where it's on the same side of the road, so yes. So cell phone poles we put up, cell phone sites, uh, utilities would be kind of... Um, Might want to have some buffer. Is where it's a road reserve, but I've said it's true, where it's not a road reserve, they would need um, just the, the rules as normal would apply. Um, so yes, if you're in front of a, um, or within a certain distance of a heritage building, you would need consent. But at the moment, there'd be a buffer? Um, to some things, like more, more um, outstanding natural landscapes. Um, right. Or um, significant ridge lines. Other than Which is quite good, isn't it? Yeah, and I've retained those where I think it's necessary. So what are, the, what are the buffers that you're removing? No, oh, well, they are spelt out in the... Can, yeah. can you say where, where they are, though? Yeah. I don't have a 
page. You'd have to go to the utilities and energy chapter, but There's can a list you roughly say where yeah. they are? Yeah. Um, so the one at page 13, for example, at P1, that deals with... What page? 13. Oh, well, and the utilities and energy chapter. Cool. Josh Repose. Yep. That one? Yes. There um, is that two, you'll see the struck out I and added E. Um, and that's, that's an example of how it is throughout the chapter. So I'm um, not requiring a buffer to F, G, H, and I. So you're taking away from a suburban residential? Yeah, the same, we don't need a buffer to that zone. It's just that one zone, is all you're doing is removing that one zone? No, from F, G, H, and I. F, so a site of ecological significance? Yeah. All right, okay. Chip line of a significant tree. 20 metres of a heritage item. And the suburban residential. Yeah. You know. and, and why would you, like I'm still struggling to understand why you'd do that. Um. Like, I don't think we need to protect view shafts to, um, in those areas. Uh, for example, the, well, I mean the heritage item already has a 20 metre setback included. Um, the site of ecological significance is not necessarily about the view to it, it's about what's in it, rather than, um, rather than you know, being able to see clearly. Um, and I think the other thing is that these areas are generally not where um, utilities would be established. All right, so like Charlesland, Char Charlesworth wetlands, for example, you could you'd have no buffer; they could just put poles up. Um, yeah, and well, assuming that's a site of ecological significance, but okay. um, there are already poles there. So, yes, in short. Okay, I mean, I can just vote against it. I personally can't see why we'd do that. I think it's perfect. Lots of perfectly other good land available for some of these things. So, um, so you want that th you want to um, vote on this separately. So, would you like to move that this not be proceeded with, or something? So move an amendment so that we can just deal with it? Amendments on page 18. So, so you'd say... Um, oh, re reject the officer's um, yeah. recommendation yeah. on the buffer, buffers, buffers from trees yeah. on page 18. Oh, I'm looking at yeah. this version. Recommendation 38. Recommendation 38. On page 18. Reject the officer's recommendation to remove buffers. From trees. Buffers from trees. Is it just the tree ones you wanted or all of the buffers? No, all of them. I can't Sorry? Oh, all, all of them. All of them. All of the buffers. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. No. Take out the word from trees. Reject yeah. the officer's recommendations to remove buffers. To remove buffers. Mm. That's right. right. So, do I have a, a seconder for that view? Um, Phil, I'll put that motion. All those in favour say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. No. No, no. The Yardie's amendment. Yeah. Yeah, no, I'm, no, I'm, not, supporting no, I'm not supporting the amendment. Oh, look, let, let's just have a vote. vote. Um, so, vote. we just have a hand vote. Those in favour, put your hand up. Four and four, against, hands up. 
That's for all, so the amendment fails. So um, we will then move on. So that takes us through to recommendation 39. Add notes clarifying when relevant national environmental standards. It's fairly required. straightforward. Yep. Oh, except for, uh, no, that's right. Recommendation 40. In a. <laughs> that's, that's good. That's basically picking up the fuel tanks. Right. Um, 41. Sorry, can we just be, be clear? You're proposing a new assessment matter for fuel tanks. In addition to the assessment matter, yeah. 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 Um, and then uh, recommendation 41. Um, mounting of solar cells. No amendments. Yep, that's all good. 42, 42. 43 and 44 you might want to consider. They, they were proposing changes. So no wind turbine exceeds a total height of 20 metres as opposed to 15. Um, Well, it says, it says to better align the provisions with the technical report, so I assume that it was backed yeah, up so by the... Yeah, so there was some confusion. Well, I, I guess amended the, the words to, to try and read better a few times and, and somehow I'd lost the sight of the fact that the technical report said the pole, pole could be 15 metres and then the turbine could stick up another five above that you know, and that would be OK. So you know, it was just a, an amendment to reflect that. And this might not be the right place for it or whatever, but are there, are there issues around noise related to that or is that in a different...? Um, there are issues with noise um, for wind turbines, particularly in residential areas and for large wind turbines in all areas. Um, but is that addressed? It is addressed, yeah. Thank you. Okay, and then... Um, so I think that's fine. And then... 43, yeah, we're just onto that. I'm just, I'm just confused. So you're saying you agree that restriction operation to within industrial and rural zones is not warrant, warranted. So are you removing any restrictions on industrial and rural zones, but keeping them in for the residential? Yes, that's correct. Um, so the, the rule um, that that's an excerpt of only applies to wind turbines in industrial and rural zones. Um, but it included that, that number six that it deleted that was really about protection in residential areas. Um, but the rule is that the previous one was um, amended and I didn't follow through and, and delete that before. So you're basically just deleting the hours of operations in industrial and residential. Is there any buffer like um, where you've got industrial right next to residential? Yeah, so that they still need to comply with the, um, with the noise, relevant noise standards and if they were on the edge of a, a zone boundary they would find it quite difficult or probably impossible with the current technology. Um, so there is essentially a buffer. Right, and is there any consideration given to like in a rural area like say the peninsula that um, because there's less kind of, I forget what you call it, white noise or that background noise, so in the city you've got a lot of, you know, other noise, in a peninsula where you've got a little quiet village and it's pretty quiet at night, if you had the sound of wind turbines mm. constantly going it could be quite, quite an impact. I would have and you still need to comply with the noise provisions. And those have been assessed as being appropriate for, for those zones. Um, I agree that there's probably less other noise in there that night. Um, but again, the dwellings are, are much the space much further apart in the rural areas. Right. So, so what's the worst that could happen under if taking this rule out? So you could get a wind farm next to a little village. Well, it's not it's not about wind farms. It's about small individual turbines. Um, I yeah, but this is. Three but the, the, sorry, have I misunderstood this? I thought this wasn't affecting the residential areas. This no, was just done. I think what um, Councillor was saying is, if it was near a residential area or near a residential activity, people live in people live in rural areas, and I'm just mindful to protect them from having a wind turbine going all night. 
um, that would be quite annoying, I would have thought. What's the current rule? The current rule? Yeah. In terms of a buffer one, or One turbines. Uh, oh, so I'm not quite sure what you mean by that. Well, so are they allowed to operate between 10 and 7 a.m. at the moment? Oh, there are no rules. Um, right. So we're, we're writing new rules. So, I mean, basically, if we kept this in, they could still operate like that if they got a consent. They just had, the only difference is that it means they'd need a consent. Okay, can you repeat that? They'd need a consent if they wanted to operate outside of those time restrictions. If we left that They would have to get a consent, if we which would then be subject to maybe. But there would be pointless forcing people to get a consent if no one could hear them. Yeah. And, the, and the noise standards. The noise standard are, are, are is designed to protect against that. Mm. They still have to comply with that. I mean, if they're outside the noise level, they'd have to apply for mm. a consent. Mm. That's right. That's just what it comes down to the noise standards. Yeah. Yeah. Duplicate those. So that's why the. That's why it doesn't. So what the alcohol policy? There's no point in the district plan trying to control alcohol. There's a policy in place. Yeah. Um, next one, utilities and energy, no new overhead line shall be erected in an area where no overhead utilities exist. Ooh, very good. Um, recommendation 45, now that's, um, uh, Vicky wants to come back for that, so, oh, okay. So we can we can we put that one on hold and so come back. So you want to leave all the Wigram ones then and go on to schools and tertiary on page twenty seven. Yep. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Okay. I don't think so. I think who who ones were? I've got her list. Somebody did raise um, schools. I think it was Councillor Johansson. It was about advertising. So, um, page 27 in the spiral bound document, it's a um, specific purpose zone. Right. So, sorry. Uh, recommendation 48, are we doing? Yes. No? Yes. yes. That's no modification. Is that all right? That's right. Kind of take us through if there's any significant changes that you're recommending around the education and kind of what the minister is seeking to achieve. Um, there's nothing terribly major. Um, some of the recommendations were actually. Um, to not change um, objectives and policy. Um, I guess there's one change in regard to the um, policy and rules that we have with regard to alternative uses for school sites if uh, education use um, no longer requires all or part of that site. Um, I think the Crown wanted there to be permitted activity status for alternative uses um, in accordance with the listings we've got in the school um, zones and that's actually what we had in the operative plan. Um, there was a bit of debate internally about that and whether that was um, the appropriate status and I did have um, restricted discretionary in the um, proposal but we've gone back to the permitted activity status of the operative plan so that's kind of not actually a big change in the scheme of things. There's, no, there's none, nothing terribly controversial about any other proposed um, officer recommendations. No. Sorry? For, Unity, sorry, which one? On the, on the first one, under yeah. A, in the officer recommendation. I think that's about the word any, um, and um, probably it was pointed out um, both in the Crown comments and also to me by other um, peer reviewers that um, the RMA doesn't actually require that we mitigate all adverse effects in that sense of any. Um, so all I've done is take out the word any so it still says mitigating adverse right. effects. Um, 
So, so yeah, it's not a, a biggie either, really. Yeah. Okay. Next one. What, sorry, which recommendation are we doing? 51? Sorry, I still just want to go through 50. Sorry? I, I just wanted to go through 50 as well. So, um, the rewrite of that policy under 21.6.1.2. Yeah, that's the same point really. Um, the original wording um, was a little bit different to that um, and it kind of talked about, um, I can't remember, if, I don't think I have a copy here, but um, adverse effects, here we go, maintain the amenity of neighbourhoods um, surrounding education sites and um, that was considered to be potentially um, in terms of maintaining the amenity in exactly the same state, potentially unachievable, because there's always going to be some effects, even if they're um, minor. Okay. So it's more permissive? Um, I guess it's kind of more realistic, actually, is probably the better word. Right, okay. And we're not... Um, and just, just, sorry, at a high level, just help me understand. Existing school sites that are no longer being used for education purposes revert back to their underlying zoning? Um, well, yes. Um, we've got a kind of a slightly complex situation, which I won't go back to um, in our plan with that. Um, but, yeah, the designating authority um, can use the site for um, its underlying um, purpose. In our plan, it's actually schools, but then we also have a listing of um, what we would see that site being able to be used for, and you can do that as an alternative use, which is... Generally speaking, residential zoning, if it's residential zoning, zoning that surrounds schools. But we haven't had any list of schools who are intending to lift their designation. Oh, OK. So, so far there hasn't been any um, lifting of designations as a result of the schools um, restructuring that's occurred, um, but there could be in the you know, medium term. Right. So there'd still be an assessment if, say, you took Phillipstown School it was developed into like L3 housing. Would the community have any rights to be notified or would there be any kind of other public processes where people could be involved in what the future outcome would be? Did you say a particular Phil school? Phillips School, just because oh, I know, because okay. it's in the L3, well, I okay. think it... Well, that probably wouldn't be re industrial or? As residential because it's in an industrial right. zone, effectively. So um, that could be redeveloped as industrial because that's in accordance with that surrounding land use. So it's the underlying zone. Exactly. The rules yeah. of the underlying zone apply. So if they need a rule, for instance, if it was in, under the industrial chapter, if they need some kind of consent, that's what they'd have to go for because the actual designation for a school would be uplifted. Mm -hmm. So that makes sense, doesn't it? That's but pretty logical. Yeah. A situation that's already pertained in Christchurch, you know, since at least 1995, I think, with the um, proposed plan that we did always specify an alternative um, zone so that that was kind of giving people a bit of certainty about what could occur on that site yep. and it's also easier for the um, provider because actually at this time we really do need flexibility yeah all right so on to recommendation 51 that'll look straight forward 52 mm -hmm. oh, that's yep. oh sorry can i just um b we're saying no change this is the land at Mon montana ave so I think I asked for my vote to be recorded against that. Sorry, what Sorry. recommendation are you on? Um, Montana Ave. Oh, Montana. 50, 50 oh. That's me actually, I think, still. Is yes, that it is. Um, recommendation 51? Yeah. Um, that was just a questioning by the um, government departments of the fact that we'd made some changes in the um, mapping in phase two versus phase one, um, which really only results from the fact that we didn't review the education zones in phase one. So the Montana Avenue, and I think you might have picked up earlier in earlier discussions, is university land and um, all of it except for one parcel is already owned by the university and used for things like um, accommodation for visiting academics and office uses, etc. But in the medium term they're talking about using that land for um, future student hostels. And um, actually I had understood um, last year that they were talking about kind of in the next two or three years, but I heard recently that they're now pushing that out to more like sort of maybe 10 years away because of budgetary um, issues. Yeah, now in a residential neighbourhood, 
no longer has a residential neighbourhood. Beg your pardon? The person that lives there now, the property owner, who the university doesn't own, has gone from a residential neighbourhood to a... Mm. Yeah, I agonised about that, but I think that um, basically in the longer term um, they will end up um, probably being bought out or um, effectively deciding to move if the university is attempting to have um, higher intensity of activities all around them. That's fine. I mean, I think we had this debate previously, so I just have my vote recorded against it again. Yeah, I just think that we'll deal with that at the at the end. So, I mean, if you just want to note the ones that... I mean, I, I'm, I'm, it's perfectly fine if we can find a mechanism just for those that, that, you know, voted against things along the way during the informal process that they have that confirmed um, on particular issues. So we'll just note that one. Um, the uh, recommendation 52, 